Hello, what is up guys? Today I will be going over some important terminology for the introduction to financial math test and just terminology that is in in general important to financial math. First off, we have APR, annual percentage rate. It is defined as an index showing the cost of borrowing money on a yearly basis expressed as a percent. Now, this sounds a bit confusing, so I'm going to give you an example. Now, let's say we have an APR of 12%. So 12%, okay. And again, annual percentage rate, meaning per year, okay. And we have taken on a re revolving credit debt of $1,000. Now, normally, this is the total sum of the interest, meaning that you're usually paying this APR on a per month basis. That's normally the case. So in this case, you'd pay $100 interest, $100 interest on the first month because you'd be paying 1% interest per month because it's 12% per year, meaning 1% per month, as in 12 months in a year. And if you had revolving credit debt, this interest will actually compound, meaning that in the first month, you know, after the first month is completed, you'll have $1,100. But then in the next month, you will pay 1% interest again, but now you're paying that on the $1,100. This is why you should never get into revolving credit debt as um. As yeah, you can see, it can be can be pretty costly. You have, should have good financial management. Anyways, next up is a budget. A budget is a plan for using money in a way that best meets your wants and needs. For example, you may say, I don't want to spend more than $500. Uh, well, let's say I don't want to spend more than $1,000 per month on food. And then you set that as your food budget. And then you set that as your food budget, your food budget. That's an example of a budget. Next up, we have down payment. A portion of the cash price of an item that has to be paid before financing the rest on credit. What this means is if I wanted to buy a house, so let's say I wanted to buy a house. Now houses are very expensive, right? Let's say that this house had a price tag of $1 million, of $1 million. Sorry, this writing isn't so good. I'm just going to write 1M, $1 million. That's what the house was listed at. Now, obviously, I don't just have $1 million lying around for me to buy this house. However, what I do have is I have $100,000 lying around, so I can spend the $100,000, and this is my down payment. Down payment, and now the rest of this will be financed on credit through an installment loan. So the other $900,000 will be paid off via installment loan. And this would mean on credit because there's someone else paying and I will pay this person back over a multiple year time span. So that's an example of down payment. It's just that initial payment. So I only have to pay from a put, from put interest on the $900,000, which I take as a loan. Next up, we have invoice, a bill listing the quantities and cost of items purchased. And it's, here's an example of an invoice, actually. So you can see this is the address over here, the number, the date issued, and the total amount, as well as each, as well as each item bought. So the unit cost, the name of the item, and then the subtotal plus the tax plus the total amount. In a way, this part at least may look kind of like a receipt. The only the key difference between an invoice and a receipt is that with a receipt you have already paid the amount. Invoice is a bill which you have to pay. This is a bill which you have to pay. Bill which you have to pay. Which you have to pay. Have to pay. And normally they will give you a certain date by which you have to pay this invoice. So on this case, they have wrote in invoice terms, please pay your invoice by dot dot dot. Here I'll just zoom out a bit so that you can see the invoice more clearly. 